A recent witch test of olive oil found some surprising results, with standard Napolina being rated higher by our experts than its special selection counterpart, and Lidl and Waitrose failing to repeat the best buy awards they received in 2009. We're here at The Oil Merchant in London with Charles Carey. Charles is one of our expert taste testers. He has 25 years experience of tasting olive oil. So Charles, what makes a good oil stand out? Well, first of all, there's the aroma, and then there's the taste. And the taste can be divided into the balance that you get at the front of your mouth, and there's pepperiness that you get when you swallow the oil. And then you also need to look for the complexity as well. Now, there are different ways of tasting oil. If you're doing it just for fun, then we'll pour some oil into our bowl and dip a bit of bread into it. And this is what we do in a shop. Uh, and then you just soak the bread in it and you taste the bread and try and get the flavours from the oil like that. If one's doing it professionally, then you pour the oil into a dark coloured cup because you shouldn't be influenced by the colour of the oil. Give it a swill around, put your hand over the top and warm it up a little bit in your hand and give it a good sniff. <sighs> And you'll try and get some aromas and analyse those aromas. You might be getting fruitiness or spiciness on the aroma. Then we'll have a taste. And you'll notice I sucked in a bit of air to try and disperse the oil around my mouth to try and get those sweet flavours at the front of the mouth and then a little bit of bitterness in the middle of the mouth and pepperiness as you swallow the oil. If you look for the balance between those sweet flavours, bitterness and pepperiness. That is a well-balanced oil. Now, as long as the balance is correct between the three different areas of the mouth, mm. then that is really what we're looking for. Then we need to think about the complexity. The complexity is, uh, you get a French oil, for example, that is very light, very delicate. It can be delicious, but it's not a very complex oil. And you can get some Italian oils that are made from more than one variety of olive, that have great complexity, great depth of flavour and will really fill the mouth with aromas and flavours. And I see you've got some socks here to cover up some of the oils. Yeah, well we don't want to be influenced by the brand of the oil or indeed where it comes from because different varieties of oil is growing in different countries and they create oils of different flavours. So Charles, what, what kinds of olive oil would be best for certain dishes? There are two ways of getting your oil from, from an olive by refining, and that gives you a completely clear, tasteless product, which you buy at the chemist for putting in your ears, or by just simply pressing. And if you mix some of those together, you get what is sold in the supermarkets as olive oil. And that's good for high temperature cooking, where you don't really want the flavours of the oil for coming through. And you can use it for making mayonnaise as well. Then there's extra virgin olive oil. And there are two distinct types of extra virgin olive oil. There's the commercial extra virgin olive oils, the ones you buy in the supermarket, like the ones we've been tasting. Mm. And then there's the ones that I import, which are the estate bottled ones. Now, of course, you know, I would say that you want to dip your bread into the very best estate bottled olive oils, but they are expensive. So you, know, you find a good commercial extra virgin olive oil, and you can certainly dip bread into that. I use good commercial extra virgin olive oils for cooking with, for frying a piece of fish, for example. And I'll use an estate bottled olive oil for finishing dishes, for pouring over your new potatoes. Um, you know, it's like a Chateau bottled wine. It's expensive. You don't want to use it very regularly or very exuberantly. But um, get those aromas coming off of a cooked dish, like new potatoes, something like that. And it is absolutely wonderful. So in the test, there was one olive oil that stood out as a Best Buy. Can you tell me what made it stand out for the others? Let's taste it together. Um, I'm going to pour some into some of your tasting cups, which are very good and practical. They're uh, dark, so have a sniff of that. Okay. See, I'm getting aromas of green bananas and maybe a bit of passion fruit, a bit of tropical fruit there. I don't know if you can pick up on that. Then I'm getting a very nice balance between the flavours I'm getting at the front of my mouth, that sweet, slightly almondy flavour, and a bit of gentle pepper at the back. See, I would have said this was a very good versatile oil. It's not a taxing oil. It's an oil that lots of people are going to like. It's got enough complexity to finish a dish, uh, or to cook with, even. So it's got enough strength to cook with. Um, and I would have said that's a very good, well-balanced complex olive oil. Charles, thank you very much for joining us today. 
We've tested all of ours from supermarket-owned brands to big names. To see the full results, go to witch.co.uk.